would you really have those feelings inside of you if you knew yourself that you were a part of that or that was a part of you that's probably better to say hey what's up everyone I am on my track to do 21 vlogs. I think I'm getting a haircut today. Hopefully soon. Uh, I think my sister's coming. I gotta chop off this thing. And um, like I do every morning, I, I'm on YouTube. I don't watch. I don't really watch TV because like, you know, even in the Philippines we have TVs, but I don't watch TV. I mean, like the typical media. I mean, typical things most people watch. Although I do watch, uh, I did watch Supernatural. I think they're they come up with their 14th season, and my wife and I, Ruby and I, are watching um, Supergirl. I, I like the comic stuff, but that's pretty much the only entertainment I watch as far as what's on screen. However, I do watch, I do watch a lot of stuff about history. I love history, and um, you know, and even dealing with like a sociology. Uh, anthropology, uh, ancient history, you know, right now, I don't know if you can see. Oh, a little focus, see. Native, the native black people of the Philippines. I don't know, I don't know if you can see that right there. There it is. So, I'm always, you know, I'm just inquisitive that way. I believe that you should always constantly learn as much as you can before you leave this earth, right? And even pertaining to business, you know, honestly, history always repeats itself. You know, the mannerisms of being a human being over the thousands and thousands of years doesn't really change. You know, you can you either elevate to yourself to be a better person or you just stay the way you are, ignorant or whatever. It's, it's uh, And certain times you can predict certain things and what businesses you can get into due to those uh, factors. But that's besides the point. Today's Sunday. Today's supposed to be my relaxing day, but this is basically my errands day. Uh, this is a very interesting mini documentary. Uh, it's, it's from people from Thailand. Maybe I'll download this and put it up here somewhere. Let it play like a preview of it. Maybe you guys can um, watch it as well. I'll put the links down below. It's a very interesting thing that uh, most Filipinos don't really like to talk about because uh, obviously, you know, the darker you are, the more socially not accepted you are. So they don't really celebrate, uh, you know, the Aitas, the Aitas, the Agtas, the Ifogaos, except that lady that does tattoos, but no one really embraces that, I think. There's probably people out there, but generally speaking, so, you know, what the majority of people see, which is the which is the stuff on social media, stuff on ABS-CBN, TV5, whatever, you don't really see that that much, you know, because, um, I don't know. Well, then, then again, throughout the world, the indigenous people of the world really don't get that much play. That's just how it is because uh, it's just how it is. I don't know. I don't know why. But I watch these documentaries because I am. I guarantee you, the majority of Filipinos, outside of the ones who can trace their lineage back like pure Chinese, and but even the Chinese, if they're coming from the southern region of the of China or from like they can trace their blood back to Taiwan. A lot of them have a Aboriginal blood. A drop is a drop, you know, in your in your genome or in your DNA. These things interest me. I don't know if it interests you. I really liked it. Uh, it shows uh, a lot of things that I'm kind of used to, you know. Uh, and it shows the certain traditions that have been passed out, and I see it within my own life now, which is it's really uh, interesting and uh, fascinating. For me, it is. I appreciate seeing that that uh, that face of the Aita, the Agda, because I see a lot of my family in there as well. You know, even though we're mixed, we're uh, we're mixed. I know we're mixed. You know, it's through my mom and everything else like that. But like uh, I've you know I've seen many relatives that look similar to them, so I know I have that in me, and I'm proud as well. I'm not. I don't shy away from that. The reality of it is, is that uh, most Filipinos joke around, joke about it, uh, are ashamed of it, and that's the most sickest part of that. And um, you know, no matter how much you, uh, even if you make so much money 
make so much money to get cosmetic surgery to fix your nose, uh, to fix your cheekbones, whatever you want to do, whatever. Uh, what's going to happen when you have kids? Your kids are going to be, you know, you, you can go out there and seek a Caucasian man or a man that is close to the look that you want, but you have to understand how DNA works. The majority of the time, something's gonna come out and uh, the original face, your original face will come out. Me personally, I believe you should accept and embrace whatever you are. Like uh, like I said before, you, you see my youngest brother. Looks very okay, my, my brother, my brother's a white boy, right? <laughs> He's a white boy. My mom looks like a white lady. My dad, on the other hand, round face, uh, Bigger nose. I got this from him. However, I got the profile from my mom. You know, I got the the length from my mom. Uh, I definitely got the uh, the receding hairline from my mom. You know, <laughs> her, her grandfather was bald. My my grandfather was bald on my mom's side. Oh, I definitely got the attitude from my mom. You know, fiery Spanish. You know that that intensity. Business acumen probably from my dad. Uh, business ethics, neither of them, <laughs> but uh, yes, pretty much. I, I believe, like, me, this is, I really believe this. If everyone knew, like literally, like, everyone knew, if you knew, like if you knew, you were, you had white in you, Caucasian in you, you had Islam, Muslim blood, Middle Eastern blood in you, you had black blood in you, would you be racist? You know, that's a question that I think people need to ask themselves, like, would you really have, you know, for the people who are who hate on other cultures, would you really hate that culture that you have something against? Would you really have those feelings inside of you? If you knew yourself that you were a part of that, or that was a part of you, that's probably better to say. I can only judge people on their characteristics and their how they handle things rather than, you know, their background, you know. Because evil comes in every shade. What's up, people? Uh, my journey to get a haircut today did not happen. Uh, for some reason, <laughs> the barber was closed. This journey of trying to get a haircut for the past couple of weeks, I have been unsuccessful, so... I don't know, man. I need to get this cut, man. Uh, you know, back home, usually I get a haircut like every week, week and a half, just to keep myself looking sharp and everything, but... Man. <sighs> Watch Supergirl with my wife. Probably binge watch that thing. I literally had to wait three hours until they all stopped shot. Uh, oh finish. My God, what a headache waiting waiting for women. Ugh. I'm gonna build a store one day, right? A store, a female store. It's something with makeup or whatever, whatever it is. And I'm just gonna build within that store a man cave within the store where men can go. Nice lounge chairs, TVs, maybe a bar. I don't really drink, but you know, for the customers. Pool table. Just a man cave in the department store. Most men resort to sitting down on whatever couch that's available. And then, you know, God forbid there's a bunch of other men there. Uh, you're gonna be standing up, walking around. And then what happens is you're gonna try to push your wife, girlfriend, hurry up, come on, are we done, are we done, are we done? You know, I don't have the patience for it, you know. And this is my theory, right? This is my theory. Most women, what they do is, you you pick up a select, you select one thing, or you select one thing, like a shoe, for instance, today, a shoe. You select the shoe, you go through a hundred other shoes, they look for a hundred other shoes, after X amount of time has passed, you're trying on these shoes, this and that, da 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 da, -da. you eventually rotate back, circle back around, and pick the first shoe that you chose as the one you want. And that's uh, fr like really frustrating to me. Like, you know, before I go to the store, I know what I want already. It's go. I want shoes, go. And um, my wife is always complaining that uh, I should dress a lot nicer, you know, whatever. And, you know, uh, back home in the Philippines, I'm usually in a polo and whatever. I'm like, listen, I'm not even concerned about that, man. After a particular age, I, I am becoming less and less concerned about my image, right? Image as in what looks, obviously. Like a shirt's a shirt, you know, like I do have expensive things, you know, like don't get me wrong, you know. On the top, I'm very, I'm very frugal. Frugality and being a cheapskate is two different things, you know, two different things. You know, this is like a preppy brand right here, Lacoste. I have nice things, but, you know, they last me. I've had this thing for maybe four or five years. Still good, still soft. 
washed it many times already, it's still good. I like buying quality over quantity. Like, you know, I might have two pairs of shoes, but they last me a very long time. I might have like 20 polos, but they last me a long time. You know, I got some polos that are like 10 plus years old, you know. Still look great, still fit great, you know, outside of me gaining weight or losing weight, you know, but generally speaking, I buy for quality. I have like maybe two suits. I did leave them at home. I might have to buy more suits. I don't, I don't really, I'm not really concerned about, you know, the nicer things, nicer material things in life, you know. I'm really trying my, I'm really trying to gear myself and put me on that road to where ultimately, ultimately, be able to spend time with my family every single day, you know, like be able to spend time and take care of my dogs, work on my, my hobbies, you know, my motorcycles, you know. Um, I still got like two or three motorcycles in the house that I haven't, I haven't built. So I gotta work on those, you know what I mean? If I do get more cars, part, especially sportier cars that I like, working on those, you know, I wanna have enough revolving, residual, passive income coming in where I can, I can, I can spend time with those things. And from time to time travel and things like that, but I am not in that mode of exerting my effort to show people I have money. It's just not me, you know, it's just, I just can't do it. You know, it's just not me. Now, with that said, I, I've always believed this since I was a kid, right? No, maybe not so much as a kid. Maybe going 25, 26 going up. I got into the mode of like, okay, only the people in the know will know that I have expensive things. That's my outlook, like, okay, because right, I would rather be a connoisseur than a trend follower, if that makes any sense to you guys. The vibe and the vibe that you portray is like a beacon for people just like you. Sometimes some stupidness will come to you, but you can bet that out really fast. You can bet it out really fast, you know. The aura you put out is usually, you know, people of like, like minds come to you, like, like personalities come to you. Everyone's different, but generally speaking, you have like a, you know, common denominator. For me, life is just like, yo, let me jump on my Ducati, you know, a fun ride or whatever. Because at the end of the day, in the Philippines, having a big bike ha is having a big bike. Nobody really cares, you know, not, not cares about brands, but nobody really knows the brands. They see a Honda CBR, it's a big bike. They see a Yamaha R6, it's a big bike. Jixers, big bike. Ducatis and the Aguses, Aprilia, they're just big bikes. For me and the connoisseurs out there, they see like a, they'll see like a 748 Ducati. You got people going crazy over it. Oh my God, older bike. Just artistically, aesthetically beautiful. One of the most beautiful bikes I've ever seen in my life. It's just gorgeous, timeless. Then you have like uh, the newer ones, the 1299s. Or the, um, I think the V4 Panigales now. Oh my God. And one of the most beautiful bikes ever that I really, really love. And the Agusa F4. What a beautiful bike, man. Oh my god. Uh, there's a few bimotos that are really, really nice as well. And then, super exclusive, super exclusive Yamaha R7. Been trying to find it. Super rare. Super rare. Only kind of source somebody in the know would like, you know, would like those things. So, I'm that type of guy. Maybe you are too, you know. And, and I mean, at the end of the day, right? I would rather have a beautiful house. Like, that's why I'm redoing my house now. I'm going to soon. I, I, I gotta set out my plans and stuff. I'm, I'm redoing everything because um, if you get a sports car or motorcycle, at best, two people can enjoy it. You have a beautiful house with amenities, just a beautiful house to be in and hang around in. A lot of people can enjoy it, and, that, and that's more me. You know, like, I want friends and family to enjoy those certain things, like, New Year's Eve, I, I buy a lot of fireworks, you know, for everyone to enjoy. Uh, December 21st, which is my birthday, I've been, this is my second year running now. I do a giveaway at my stores. And then I, I have like a small little feast, you know, like, uh, you know, like, you know, food for the, the people. So I, I do giveaways like that because I have to step away because I take things for granted as well. Like, there's certain standards in my life that are like really sometimes too far to, you know, and to some of these people that are around me, some of my neighbors, it's too far for them to reach. And sometimes it takes someone like me to show it to them that, wow, yeah, I experienced this, it makes, me, it makes them feel good. And at the same time, encouraging them, like, yeah, go after it, man, do what you gotta do. You can get it too. I'm, I'm nobody special, I'm a regular guy, you know. I'm just a regular guy who works really hard. 
I'm nobody, man. I'm a regular guy. Whatever you can do, or whatever I can do, you can do way better. You are gonna go through some failures. That's that's a given, man. That's a freaking given, man. The problems that I have, I personally have, those are like first world problems. And I'm grateful for them. Because why? Those can be minimized. Those can be dealt with. But being hungry, questioning when you are going to eat today, I don't have those issues. And I'm super grateful that I don't because to be in that situation, oh my God, you get desperate, you're gonna do stupid things, you know? I can understand how things turn for the worse sometimes because of just a simple uh, need for, you know, surviving and even more the burden of helping your family survive. Help me out to get like 2,100 subscribers. I really appreciate that. And more importantly, help me reach that 1 million mark. I would be, I, I, oh my God, I, I should do a giveaway for my 1 millionth view, right? I'm gonna think about it. Help, comment down below, comment down below if we should do a giveaway for the channel. Cause that's a very big pinnacle for me, man. Like, yo, my, my man, Rike, he like, you know, my man Rike is doing big numbers, man. I'm so far from him, man. Not comparing numbers or anything like that. But man, you can say whatever you want to say about him, but that man is, he's smart. Mr. Bud Brown, smart guy, smart people, dude. Bless, man. They're just doing their thing. And uh, I look up to that, man. I really appreciate that stuff. Help me get to that one million, man. Help me. It shows growth in the channel, and it shows that I'm uh, doing something right, you know, doing something right or helping in, in any little way that it shows that I'm helping something, someone, you know. So um, take care, have a blessed day, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.